what is going on out there good people and welcome back to lmd trading where i am living my dream trading i hope everybody out there is doing well today as for myself i am doing good i am actually re-recording this recap um, because i discussed some things in the previous one that I thought twice about putting out just now. I will probably, um, I'll discuss it next week after I do a little bit more research on it. But um, sitting down at the desk to get a recap out of the way, um, we requested a payout from Apex yesterday. I met their qualifications. I hit the threshold for the amount of money they wanted me to make. I traded the number of days they wanted me to trade. And once you do all that, you can request a payout between the first and the fifth. I requested that payout. They approved it. And today it was time to get back trade. Um, this morning I traded a different PA account than the $25,000 account. Um, because I wasn't sure if they had got, it got improved yet. So I traded the PA account that I was in this morning, went out in my shop, did some work, noticed that they had approved the payment. So I took some trades in the 25 K account on my computer that's out in my shop. So it's not going to be reflected in these numbers today. But, um, it was a green day in the 25 K account. We made about. I want to say the 117 or 134, somewhere around that number. Um, in that account, um, with Apex, you can request between $500 to $1,500 every payout for the first three months. And then after three months, you can request whatever you want to request. So I was a little shy of $1,700. So I was going to pull out half. I decided to pull out a grand, um, which left about 680 bucks in the account. That's enough wiggle room to be able to trade MNQs comfortably. And my plan is to make a hundred dollars a day. And if I can make a hundred dollars a day, then in 10 days, because I got to trade 10 days, That'll be a thousand dollars and we'll be over that limit to request another payout. Um, if I can make two hundred dollars a day, that's even better. But on average, I want to make a hundred dollars a day. That means some days I might make seventy dollars. That might mean some days I make one fifty. I make two hundred. That might mean I have a red day one day of fifty bucks. But on average, I want to make a minimum of $100 a day. But let's go ahead. Let's jump on over, look and see what we did do um, in the other PA account that I have. Reviewing trades for February 2nd. Um, we had a gross PL of 380. We gave back 23. That means that we made $357 today. Solid day in the market solid day in this account um that was on seven trades six greens one red average winning trade 63 average losing trade 23 um largest winning trade 105 largest losing trade was 23 we only had the one loss that trade was on a mnq um i took that loss and I was like, come on, man, let's let's get out of that habit of trading MNQ. Let's jump back into trading the way that we know how to trade. Uh, for some reason, I was kind of on eggshells trading the past this past week um, just because I, I was not trying to give back any money that I had made. And it had me trading a certain kind of way, y'all. It just, I was kind of trading fearful. I call it trading fearful, not wanting to give back, um, not wanting to give back money. And I swear, I swear my phone knows when I'm doing these videos, y'all. 
Um, when I did the other recap, my phone got the text message. It's, it was 10 o'clock then. It's 1038 at night now. It don't matter if I'm doing this video at five in the afternoon, nine o'clock in the morning. My phone is always going off. What is up with that? But it is what it is. Let's jump on over into the main screen. We'll take a look at the charts. We'll look at the five minute chart real quick. And then we'll look at the probably look at the um we'll look at the two minute and then the two hundred tick chart because I like I like the 200 tick charts picture today especially in the afternoon but this morning this is what we were looking at um 8 30 we had about five reports that came out and look at what it did to the market nice flush down this thing made a nice move back up and then it flushed down and look at right here that aqua color line that's a four hour level y'all and when this thing came back down to this four hour level, I got excited and I was like, I want to take a trade. So I did a YouTube short kind of breaking down that trade. So if y'all hadn't caught, caught my YouTube short, be sure to check it out. But comes down, bounces off the four hour level, comes up, comes back down, off to the races it goes. And then it just kind of grinded up. I did take a short right there. We'll review that one. Um, but made this nice, nice little move up right here. Pulled back to guess what? Another four hour level. Caught traction, came up, came back down to kind of retest it. And then it kind of just consolidated its way out. Just kind of consolidated its way out. And then the market closed, sold off those last few orders. But notice these four hour levels, y'all. I love the four hour levels. Got to thank life. Uh, one of the gentlemen that hangs out in the discord from time to time, he had mentioned that he likes trading on his higher time frames. Um, and it made me focus on this four hour level. And if you caught some of my older videos, you know, I used to have lines for everything, a one hour level, a 15 minute level, a five minute level. Nah, nowadays I have my four hour levels and then I'll find intraday levels throughout the day, which are the gray lines that you may or may not be able to see on the video. But um, yeah, solid, solid day. These are charts I like to look at. I like to see that. That's a nice trend. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get that off of there. Let me put my phone on silent for a minute. And... What are we going to do? We're going to switch this over to NQ. MNQ real quick. We could take a look at the one red trade that we had. We'll go ahead, blow the chart up. Computer is very slow this evening. For some reason, it took forever for OBS. Let me make sure that it's, um yeah, 11% CPU usage, so not bad. Let's take a look at this first trade that we took this morning. That was a big L. Duh. Where was it at? What time did we take that trade? Thought it was like right around eight o'clock. Give me one sec. Yeah, 8.55. There we go. Okay. All right. <clears> hmm. <throat> I got to act excited like I don't already know what what happened because like I said, I already did this. But this particular trade, y'all, something just instantly jumped out at me when I looked at this chart. Blue arrow is on the left hand side, which means that th this was a long trade. I was I, was, I took a long right here. Huh? <sighs> Boy, oh boy, LMD, what do you be thinking? This chart is red. Red means do not, do not look for longs. Do not do that. What are you doing? Look at this. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. 
and I get in at the top of the lower high, that's a perfect entry to go down. And I'm trying to go long there. So for the life of me, I do not know why I took that trade. I don't know why. Um, let's take a look at it on a two minute chart because I would not have been looking at the tick chart. That's that I do know that 200 tick chart sits off on my, on my left hand screen. Um, it will be a um, I'll be paying more attention to this next week. That was one of the things I was discussing in um, in the video that I did record. I see why I took that trade now. And that's the difference it's, it's the difference between looking at a 200 and a two minute. I took that because of this intraday level. And I was playing this to see how this came down and it bounced and it came back down. I was playing this to bounce. I was playing this to bounce. The correct bounce. Four hour level. That was the correct bounce the four hour level. So that that right there surely explains why I took that trade now. That's why I said I, I needed to look at a chart that I'm actually trading right here. It doesn't looking at the 200 clearly tells me not to go long like I did this. This picture here clearly would have told me do not go long. Two minute chart still telling me don't go long but i'm i'm trying to think that this is going to bounce like it did right there so all right let's flip it back over to in to um nq so once we took that that red trade my mindset excuse me my mindset changed i'm like why am i trading mnqs i'm not in the 25k account i don't need to um be trading on on those eggshells we can we can go ahead and start putting on some risk. Um, 25K account, I, I still can't put that risk on. But in this account, I could put that risk on. So let's come on over here. Picture is going to be pretty much the same. This is like in that area where I was taking that trade. You see, I don't have that intraday level drawn on this chart, though. Um, but notice. You get the push down and in the discord, I was telling them like, if this bounces off of this four hour level, I want to take the trade. And like I said, I did do a short. So this bounces, I take two NQs right here. I get out of the first one right here. Kind of just trail stop my second one to break even. This thing does come back, tag me for break even. Um, make a few bucks on that one. No harm, no foul. This thing continues higher. I go in again, two contracts again, pulls back, makes this move. Um, I think this was six points, 97 up to 101, about five points. So 100, 100 bucks on the first one. I'm not sure where that one got out, but overall made about 189 on this trade. So nice, solid trade. This thing pulls back to guess where? Four hour level. And then it rips. It makes the move that I thought that this would continue to do. Um, at the time it made this rip, I was actually doing the recap or not the recap, but I was doing I was building a little YouTube short. So I didn't catch this trade. Market just kind of does what it does. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Boom, it breaks. That kind of starts the new trend. Higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, lower high, lower low. Breaks that trend. There we go, back down again. 200 tick chart, this thing, it, it be moving. But it's giving you opportunities, higher, high, higher, low. Coming through here, these are, you can call that a higher low and a higher high. Um, but then once you get a clean break of it, it'll kind of let you know you, you got a clean break. But this was running. This thing is just running, just running. 
just running. Look, four hour level, it breaks it. It doesn't look back. It just kind of consolidates above it, breaks that supply. This is something I'll be talking about next week. Off to the races, chops around, breaks another supply. Again, I'll be talking about that next week. Come up to this four hour or this um, intraday level. I'm sorry, intraday level. Cracks over it, kind of double tops right there. You can kind of call that a double top. Pulls back, kind of sets a lower high off of this right here. And I go short as this is coming back down below this intraday level. I'm really only trading it back down to this demand level. Once it goes, I kind of get my stop behind it, just kind of moving it down, comes back up, kind of tags me and then goes down. But um, we're in two NQs, 17, 11, about six points. That's one hundred and twenty dollars. That was two hundred and forty dollars. And actually, let me make sure. Yeah. OK. I'm looking down at the lower left. You see one quantity there and then it's another one in there for another one. I highlight over here and you see I got out of two of them. So that tells you I bought two right there. So 120, 120, made 240 on that trade. And um, that's what got us up to 357 this morning. Don't take no more trades in the account after that. Um, breaks that demand. That's pretty, y'all. This is something that I just, I, I, just studying these charts in the afternoon, it kind of showed me something today. Um, so I want to work on that next week before I actually kind of speak on it. So that's why I'm redoing this video. But um, that is what we did today. Just a thing of beauty. Four hour level breaks it, consolidates, comes back, retest it. That's, that's money, especially when this chart is green and it's holding when it's green. Hadn't really been liking the 200 tick chart lately, um, but Spark over at Spark and Trade, he had mentioned it, that he, he, he likes using it, especially when it's above the 100 and the 200 SMAs, these two moving averages that are on my charts. Um, so I said, let me go back and look at that. Spark be coming, he be having some good information. So I'm always, I'm receptive to try it. And if it don't work, set it to the side. But if it does work, it could be beneficial. So go ahead, check out Spark and Trade. He's on YouTube. Um, while I'm giving shouts out, check out my man, Evan. Evan is on YouTube as well now with Marksman Trading or Marksman Trader. And also Vega. Vega has a YouTube channel now as well called The Honored Trader. So please check those gentlemen out. Trading is an individual thing, but you can always learn something from other traders, even if they're newer traders, because new traders are the ones that's always trying different things, always trying different things, trying to find that that one little niche, that one little edge. And it could be something that you had never thought of or, or never um, heard about, because a lot of times the newer traders are listening to everybody they they checking all of the professional traders out trying to find that edge and over in our discord a lot of the guys they they check out smb capital quite a bit smb capital is always throwing out good information um vincent he's a youtuber he's always putting out good information i listen to the trade brigade sometimes they put out great information so um, you can always learn something from another trader. And like I said, if, if you can't take nothing from it, set it to the side. What do they say? Chew the meat, spit out the bones. Take what you need up out of it. Um, it was something else that I said this morning um, based on how I plan on trading the my $25,000 account. Um Cause I did, I can kind of consult it with Vega because Vega's trading apex accounts. He has quite a few PAs and um, he's been getting paid pretty good out of them. So just kind of asking like, man, what do you think I should do as far as my um, payout and, and how to go about it. And we was on the same page, like leave, leave a good little bit in there, trade MNQs. And then I, I made the comment like, yeah, I'm just trying to get a hundred bucks a day. Um, Cause you, you can't eat an elephant only way or only way you can eat an elephant is bite by bite. 
And he was like, who in the hell would eat an elephant? And I'm like, no, man, that was a quote by um, Desmond Tutu. Um, it basically means you, you can't get it all done in one fell swoop. Go ahead and break that thing down. And that's what he does on his channel, y'all. He's um doing the Apex. Um, he did an Apex challenge. I think he, he um, passed it in about two days, two or three days. I always tell him I got him beat. I did two accounts in one day. So, But on that note, thanks for checking me out as always. Please like if you have not already. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. And as always, we can finish the conversation in the comment section. I'm going to go ahead, wrap this one up, get this one online. I right, put that other one to private and um, we'll be back at it again on Monday, y'all. Peace.